have you ever looked at others seeing them get ahead and wonder man how did they get there what are they doing that i'm not doing and most importantly what am i doing wrong well if thoughts like this are filling your head first of all take heart okay you're not alone and i've been there many times before and there is always hope there is always a way that you can change your financial situation and that's exactly what this series is about so i'm going to go through the do's and don'ts as far as changing your financial situation and also give you some great tools that will help you change your situation for the better and who does not want that and make sure you stay tuned to the very end because i'm giving away a sample budget that can help you basically get your finances on track see what you're spending and make sure that you are living within your means <sighs> that is like a hot topic right and but it is very 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 needed very much needed in order to make sure that you are living a life that is worth living and blessing others in the process as well as being able to own the life of your dreams all right so make sure that you stay tuned with me for that but before i get into the content or the topic for today if you are new welcome my name is tanisha holman and i am a financial coach and the owner of the own the life of your dreams.com it is my personal goal to help you break free from the financial chains that have you bound. So if that's something that you are interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join me on this journey. So how can I change my financial situation? And let me be frank with you. This video is going to be one on the spanking side, you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes you need something that'll help wake you up and you know something that's truth that will get you in line to help you do better and if somebody doesn't tell you the truth you continue to be on this weird cycle where you're just always broke and you're wondering why and so this video is for you we're going to tear the band-aid off and get some healing to that financial wound okay so the first and major financial step foundational step is ownership the thing is you have to own up to your part in the collapse of your finances if your finances are not where they want to be then honey you did something okay it may not be totally your fault but there is something that you did to help contribute to this. And of course, that's not in every case, but those cases are rare. Most of the time, we've done something. So the first object or order of business is to look yourself in the mirror and have a come to Jesus meeting with yourself and say, hello, my name is Tamisha Holman and I'm a debtaholic okay or i'm a shopaholic or i don't manage my funds wisely or i don't budget my money or i have no idea where my money is going or i choose the wrong people to hang around there's so many different things that people get into that cause them to lose their money to get holes in their pockets and wallets so we're going to go through a few of them so you can get an idea of how you can see your future better or how you can change your future based on the choices that you make so the first thing and major thing and something that i'm still guilty of well not totally but kind of is i do not have a plan protection for my money okay and what does that mean well i do not have enough life insurance so the school gives me life insurance because if I die on the job or whatever, they'll give my my husband $30,000, which is not nearly enough to pay off all of my debts. So if I want my family to be protected in the future, then I need to increase my life insurance because everybody's going to die, right? 
And that is something that you definitely need to think about and plan for. Getting your life insurance policies in order to making sure that your family does not have to borrow money or do chicken dinners or, you know, cry and weep and sell themselves on the street to get you buried. That's not right. That's not fair. So thinking long term, thinking ahead, thinking like somebody who has generational wealth, getting that type of protection in your pocket, in your hands to help protect your family in the future is always a wise investment. Also, do you have health insurance? You may be healthy now, okay? You may not need to go see the doctor every day or every week or every month or whatever, once a year. But there are protection plans that I help you for if in case something tragic happens where you have to sit in a hospital for a few weeks, you are covered and you're not putting all of your money into it. And of course you need to have car insurance because you never know. So make sure that you put in place a plan of protection for your money, all right? The second thing that you need to think about is do you have a savings account? Do you have money set aside for if the toilet, you know, starts spurting out sewer, sewage all over your house, okay? It, do you have money set aside for if you need to change the oil? I mean, that's simple. Um, if you need to get new tires, if the brakes go out, anything like that, if anything that could possibly happen in your life, you know, whether minor or huge, do you at least have a thousand dollars tucked away? And if you don't, then that might be something that you need to start investing or saving towards. Because if you don't have that type of protection, then when something minorly catastrophic happens, you end up going into debt to pay for it. And those things you need to at least have a financial plan for, because that's just a part of life. So the whole premise of this is if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, all right? So if you do not put this plan into place, whether your protection or your savings, then you're setting your financial future up for failure because things always happen good and bad, and you want to be prepared for both scenarios. All right, number three, are you making good decisions? And you know, you don't have to just be talking about finances, right? But there are some financial things that you might want to stay away from. Like if you have to go into debt to pay for a wig, you may want to leave that wig alone, okay? If you have to decide whether you want to buy some new J's or pay your light bill, you might need to rethink that whole situation. You should be able to live comfortably, live in maybe not exactly what you want right now, but if you're saving and taking care of your financial situations, eventually you'll get to the point where you can do that. But right now, if you're you know just now starting out working, it might not be the best way to use your money. Matter of fact, it's not the best way to use your money. But another decision that people don't think about is they decide who they hang around and who they marry. And those are major <laughs> financial uh, situations that can cost you a bundle. Who you hang around and the mentality that they have can cost you your financial future. It is a fact that the average income of a person is related to the top five people that they hang around, okay? It's the average of the top five people you hang around. So if you're hanging around people who don't have jobs, who are trying to skim and um, shake down the welfare system and trying to, you know, get over, other than, you know, trying to get a job and get off and get on their feet, then you're going to fall into that same trap, okay? Believe me, I have been there, but I am not there anymore. Praise the good Lord. All right. But if you are on, you know, if you're around, hanging around people who are winning, who are striving for more, who have, you know, at least $500,000 
a year coming in or even $100,000 a year, but they know how to plan and invest and save and are building generational wealth for themselves and their family and their children's children to come, then your mindset is going to be the same. And you're gonna to start to fall into those habits and learn from them and start to do what they do. And then your financial situation will grow just like their financial situation will grow. And you know, I it kind of goes without saying, the person that you marry is definitely going to affect your financial situation. Um, whether you stay married to them and y'all don't see eye to eye on things and then you gotta hide your money, <laughs> which, you know, it happens a lot more than that should. Or if, you know, you get a divorce and you have to separate funds, that is devastating as well. And last but not least, know, know that crisis is a life teacher. So though, Every storm is not in the forecast. And even if you plan to have all of these things in place for yourself, that does not mean the tragedy will not come for you. So you may need to think about what you can do better or just let go and let God at that point. When things happen that are totally out of your control, you have done the best to plan, you know, ask yourself, have the meeting, did I do everything I could? If the answer is yes, then let go and let God, because that's the only person that can make everything turn out all right. Even when you've done everything that you can, all you have to left to do is stand, all right? So the last thing I wanna leave you with, make sure that you know that there is no power in blaming you blaming other people for your financial situations will not help you be successful with your financial situation. It's all about taking ownership and what you attract to you, what you say, what you think, how you carry yourself in your actions, it's all gonna come back to you. You sow what you reap, what you sow, okay? I have gained a lot of my weight back and that was due to the fact that I ate ridiculously for months. I couldn't exercise because I was dealing with some physical stuff and I ate ridiculously for months. So I sew ridiculous eating and not exercising and I reaped a whole heck of a lot of pounds that I didn't want to <laughs> reap, okay? So, and that's the same thing in finances. You are going to reap what you sow. And so your thoughts, about finances, what you say about your finances will come back to you in your results. And blaming other people and not taking ownership of your life is not going to help you see the success that you want to in your finances. And if you want to find out more information on how you can change your financial situation, you probably will love this video that's floating above my head. So until next time, make sure you do everything to live free.